Hi, third grade. I'm going to read, I realized I forgot to read from Soldier Dogs yesterday, so I'm going to read two chapters today. Chapter 20. Here, Landry's packmate shouted. Bring the dog here. Come on, Chief Landry said. Here, boy. Ig Chief ignored him for a moment, standing atop a heap of overturned earth and charred wood. He'd caught Matt's scent again, somewhere in the distance, along with a whiff of grass and river water. Then the wind shifted, and all Chief smelled were bitter fumes and the guts of fallen buildings. Chief, Landry shouted again, come. Chief darted down into the road. The man needed him. He flashed around a cluster of firemen and stopped beside Landry. He didn't hear any special threat. He smelled blistering metal and charred plastic, but he didn't sense any looming danger. Over here, the first man said, standing outside a brick building. I heard something inside this movie theater. Landry jogged to the man. Where exactly? I don't know, the man said. I can't hear it anymore. Come here, boy, Landry said, calling Chief into the building. Find, 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 Chief. Chief trotted into the ruins of a big den with rows of chairs and a high ceiling and holes blasted through it. The air smelled of cigarette smoke even more than fire smoke. The creak and clatter of settling debris found, sounded faintly from the far corner. A high explosive bomb hit, the man told Landry. I thought I heard something while we were clearing the building. Landry looked at Chief. <clears throat> Chief looked at Landry. Well, Landry told the man, you didn't. How do you know? Make him check. He already checked, Landry said. He checked before he set one foot inside. Are you sure? Have you ever heard of a dog named Jet? Landry asked, heading outside. He's a German shepherd like Chief here, with maybe a little collie in him, too. Chief looked up at the sound of his name. Landry didn't seem to need any help, though, so he paused on the sidewalk to listen to the rest of the street. Jet's an English dog, Landry told the man. They say he rescued a hundred people during the Blitz when the Germans bombed London. A hundred people? You're pulling my leg. Hmm, maybe even more. Before that, he worked for a year guarding airfields, but search and rescue is in his blood. Most dogs, most animals, well, most everyone, is scared of fire. But Jet? He'd run into burning buildings and save people. He'd run through the fire. Like your dog did, the man said. Well, he's not my dog, Landry said, resting a hand on Chief's ruff. But that's right. That's how I knew he was special. Jet's handler has to hold him back to keep him from running into the flames to save people. Whoa, that is some brave dog. Yeah, Jet once raced into a factory full of poison smoke. His nose is so good he found the one survivor in the entire place. You think Chief's like that? Like I told you, Landry said. He's a natural. He's, he's running off, the man said from behind Chief as he loped toward a sudden gust of the metallic smell of blood. Why did humans spend so much time yipping at each other? Couldn't they hear the far-off whistles through the smoke? Couldn't they smell the human fear scent wafting from down the block? Chief scrambled over a pile of rubble. A sharp metal edge ripped out a hunk of his fur, but it didn't cut his skin. He barked for Landry and the other man to hurry up. I'm coming, Landry yelled. I've only got two legs. Chief rounded a corner and found two women helping an injured man. He trotted closer and sniffed the air. He smelled more injured people. The women already knew about them, though. He could tell because of the scent trails. Hello? Landry called to the women. Army here. Do you need help? Not as much as they do, one woman said, re 
as she pointing to the injured people. Oh, Landry looked from the wounded people back to the women. You're ATS. I thought you stayed in shelters during raids. You're Americans, the woman said. I thought you stayed in cowboy hats. Landry laughed and helped the women tend the wounded people. Chief watched approvingly for a moment, then he cocked his head as a far-off whistle sounded sharper and closer. Chief started to bark a warning, then caught the faintest whiff of Rachel. Where was she? He inhaled deeply. He smelled Matt, too, and a musky dampness. Not too far, but the whistling grew louder, dragging his attention back to his surroundings, a shrill, deadly sound falling directly toward this street. Fire rocks were going to hit Landry and the women. Chapter 21 Matt tried to pull away, but the German's grip was too tight. Now we're back to Matt and Rachel trying to get away from the German soldier who they rescued. They didn't really know he would be so dangerous. The man's eyes narrowed. Blood oozed down his cheek and water dripped from his flight suit. B but we saved your life, Matt said. And for that I thank you, the German raised his voice. Girl, show yourself. Come here or your brother will be sorry. Matt tried to kick the German but missed. Run, Rachel! Enough, the German shook him roughly. I don't have time to waste on... Thunk! The German blinked at Matt. He released his grip, and he swayed. Matt ripped free from the man's loosening grip, and there was Rachel standing behind him, holding the thick branch like a baseball bat, just like Matt had taught her. She had clubbed the German soldier in the head. When Rachel pulled back for another swing, the German spun around toward her. He swore and knocked the branch from her hands. Matt tried to kick him again, and this time he succeeded. The German, still tangled in the cord, stumbled a few steps. Run, Matt shouted to Rachel. Come on, come on, come on. He dashed past the German, grabbed Rachel's wrist, and raced into the darkness. A tree loomed. Bushes tugged at his pajama legs. Footsteps sounded behind them. A sort of shuffling drag as the German limped, but still moving too fast, too fast. The German soldier was gaining on them. A wall loomed in front of Matt. He yanked Rachel to one side and lunged through a doorway into an alley. He couldn't tell which way to go. He was too scared to focus, too scared to think. He ran blindly ahead. Were they on Birkhart Lane? St. Margaret Street? He didn't know. He couldn't tell. Sirens and shouts filled the air. Engines and explosions and smoke. More bombs were dropping. More bombs than ever. Another wave of German bombers flew overhead, dropping hundreds of bombs and high explosives. Yet the loudest things were Matt's pounding heartbeat and the scuff of footsteps behind them. He and Rachel sped around a corner. They raced across a street. Matt pulled Rachel into the thicker shadows of a building and risked a peek over his shoulder. He didn't see the German. The streets looked deserted and shuffle, drag, shuffle, drag. There, he heard him. The German was prowling forward. His knife gleamed in the reflected light from the fires. We need to find soldiers, Matt pulled Rachel faster down the street, or firemen. Then we should run toward the flames, Rachel's braid flapped wildly around her shoulders. That's where the firemen will be. That's the worst idea I've heard. So what should we do? We should run toward the flames, you're right, Matt said, stumbling to an intersection. Just like you said. 
The terrifying whistle of falling bombs sounded all around and above them. Every street looked like a minefield. If they took one wrong turn... It's another wave of bombing, Matt said. The biggest one yet. Where's the fire, Rachel asked, blinking at the rooftops. After taking a nervous glance behind them, Matt peered into the smoky sky. An orange glow gleamed on the thick smoke, suffocating Canterbury. But where was the glow brightest? Matt couldn't tell. He looked for the cathedral steeple, but he couldn't even see the roofs of the buildings surrounding them. He hoped his parents were still in the shelter, safe. He hoped that Chief... Shuffle, drag, shuffle, drag. The sound of the Germans' limping footsteps came from a cloud of dust and smoke billowing down a nearby street. Matt's breath caught, and the rhythm changed. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. The German had spotted them. He was closing in. Terror pricked at Matt's skin. This way, he gasped, fleeing across the intersection with Rachel. An ambulance pulled into view down the block. A dingy pool of light spilled from the hooded headlights. Help, Matt screamed. Over here, Rachel yelled. His mind reeling in fear, Matt raced forward, shouting and waving. But the driver didn't see or hear him. The ambulance turned the corner and vanished into the smoke. Matt and Rachel ran after the ambulance, trying to catch it, but they couldn't keep up. Weaving around the rubble covering the street, they raced for safety, away from the German. Matt listened for the shuffling limp, but he heard a shrill whistle instead. There was a clatter on the rooftops, a scraping sound, then a clunk. The bomb had landed nearby. That's the end of that. Have a wonderful break. Have a blessed Easter. And I will be answering emails over break, and I might even send out an email or two. So check your emails. Send me pictures.